All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond Desa, where North Korea has test fired a new long range cruise missile over the weekend. And this has come amidst a long standoff with the United States or denuclearization. Now, according to its state media, the test launches, which took place on both Saturday and Sunday, were observed by high level officials. The missiles flew some 1,500 kilometers before hitting their targets and then falling into the country's territorial waters. The Pentagon has reacted to the missile test, saying that it poses a threat to its neighbors. The U.S. Indo-Pacific Command has also said that the activity highlights North Korea's continued focus on developing its military program. The neighbors in the region have also reacted on this. South Korea, for instance, has said that Pyongyang did not give them any advance notice and that the hotline between Pyongyang and Seoul was not working. Japan has also echoed Washington, saying that the peace and safety of the surrounding areas is now being placed under threat. According to photographs that have been released by the Korean Central News Agency, the missile was being seen as launched from a transporter erected launcher and flying local media has in fact described the missile as a strategic weapon of great significance, but has given North Korea another effective means for protecting the state and also containing the military maneuvers of hostile forces. The weakened missile test launches were North Korea's first launch since the month of March. And now Pyongyang is still under a range of international sanctions over its nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs, which it continues to pursue and has given no signs that it would be willing to surrender its nuclear arsenal. And also there's been no progress that's been made in terms of nuclear talks with the United States since 2019. Remember, talks had collapsed between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and the then former president of the United States, Donald Trump, over sanctions relief and what Pyongyang would be willing to give up in return. South Korean efforts to revive dialogue have also been rebuffed. The weekend's missile tests have come after the United Nations Atomic Agency had warned last month that Pyongyang appeared to have started its plutonium-producing reprocessing reactor at Yangbyon. The Kim sister and also key advisor to Kim Yo-jong has also demanded the withdrawal of American troops from the Korean Peninsula altogether. All right, now to give us insights into the nature of this missile test that was conducted by the North Koreans and also what it means for the region at large, we are joined in by our correspondent Phoebe Amoroso, who is joining us live from Tokyo. Phoebe, thank you very much indeed for joining us in this broadcast on Vion. Now, at this point of time, what information do we have about the nature of this missile that was tested by the North Koreans who claim that this is a missile that is of strategic significance for them? Yes, this is definitely causing concerns uh, in the region, particularly among North Korea's neighbors, as South Korea and Japan. Um, it's important to note that this was a cruise missile. This is considered less threatening than a ballistic missile, but it shows that North Korea is still progressing with its weapons development um, despite the sanctions from the U.S. And it also adds to a report by the U.N. that suggests North Korea restarted a nuclear reactor um, in recent months, mm -hmm. and that's believed to be producing plutonium for weapons development. Now, South Korea has not commented, not commented on whether um, it detected the test, but it says it's working closely with the U.S. to analyze the situation. For Japan, uh, there have been several missile tests over recent years that have entered Japan's waters, and this is uh, adding concerns to conflicts within uh, Japan's. Uh, a territorial region within the seas. There is a, um, an area where the exclusive economic zones of North Korea and Japan overlap. Now, North Korea accused Japan of trespassing last month, and there was an incident back in October 2019 when a North Korean fishing vessel collided with a Japanese vessel, uh, leading to that crew being rescued. So it's really heightening concerns uh, on a maritime level here in Japan. Absolutely indeed. And also what is interesting is that the South Koreans say that Pyongyang did not give them advance notice that it was carrying out this missile test and also the hotline 
between Seoul and Pyongyang at that point of time did not seem to work. So how is the neighborhood, the nations within the neighborhood, looking at this missile test that's being conducted by the North Koreans? Sorry, could you repeat the question, please? My question was, the South Koreans have said that they had no earlier intimation that North Korea was going to carry out this missile test. And also the hotline between Seoul and Pyongyang at that time was not functioning. Sorry, it's a little hard to hear you, but yes, the hotlines between South Korea and Japan um, have been closed. Uh, they restarted in July, and that was believed to be a positive sign that uh, relations and talks would be continuing between the two countries. But South Korea then joined defense organize, um, exercises with the United States, and that led to the hotlines being taken down again. There's a big question over whether um, diplomatic talks can continue. The U.S. has said that the door to diplomacy is open, um, but they've shown no willingness to reduce the sanctions. In fact, back in March, when North Korea once again launched uh, a nuclear, um, a nuclear mi or launched a missile believed to be adding to its nuclear weapons program, Biden said that they would be prepared to take the necessary action. They, the U.S. has said that this latest development is cause for significant concern. But there are several obstacles that could also impede a coordinated effort between uh, Japan, South Korea and the U.S. in responding to this incident. And namely, uh, South Korea and Japan relations are at their lowest point as they have been in recent years, uh, particularly over the uh, so-called comfort woman issues um, that has uh, once again flared up. It's a long-standing point of contention between the two countries. And then here in Japan, there's also a presidential race to, for the LDP. So it remains to be seen just exactly what path will be taken in order to approach this issue. In the meantime, it is clear that North Korea is continuing its weapons development and remains a threat to the region. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Phoebe Amoroso, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.